As mentioned in the previous video, the LRGB composition process is done through perceptual color spaces. This is because the aim is to replace a component of the image following the behavior of the human eye, which has a non-linear response to light. We can demonstrate this using this image taken with a DSLR camera. As we said in the previous video, all images have a color component and a brightness component. However, all of the data in this image are linear, and that's not how the human eye perceives light. A linear response means that there is a direct relationship between the light that enters the sensor and the signal that is produced. In other words, if we have twice as much light, we get twice as much signal. If three times as much light enters the sensor, we also get three times as much signal. But the human eye doesn't work like that. This image is very dark and we can't see the shadows well. We can make the image brighter without breaking the linearity of the data, but to see the dark areas well, the bird's eye, for example, we need to saturate the lightest areas. Although this image is brighter, it's not how humans see the world. Instead of keeping it linear, we can make it brighter by delinearizing the data. If we move the midtones to the left, we can see the darkest areas, but we don't saturate the brightest ones. That's how the human eye works. This delinearization operation emulates the human eye's sensitivity to light. If we wanted to insert a higher quality lightness component in this image, we need to do it through a perceptual color space like CIE Lab or CIE LCH because these spaces calculate the lightness component in a way that approximates human vision. Therefore, to do the LRGB composition, first we need to delinearize the RGB image and the luminance image separately. The aim of the composition process is to stop the glass from overflowing. As we saw in the previous video, if we insert this luminance image into the image on the left, the red hues turn pink and the red channel becomes saturated because the image cannot take such a high color saturation and such a high level of lightness at the same time. Stopping the glass from overflowing means making the original lightness component of the color image and the new one we want to insert as compatible as possible. For example, if we compress the dynamic range of the image on the right, and then apply some curves to make the lighter areas darker. Now the lightness of the image we're going to insert is much more similar to the lightness component of the color image. If we apply the same composition process now, the red nebulas don't lose their color saturation and the red channel doesn't become saturated. This is the result before darkening the image, and this is after. In the previous video, we looked at the processes that we had to apply to the two images separately when they were in a linear state. If we disable the STF, we can see that they haven't been stretched yet. There are a few things to keep in mind when we stretch them. The first thing to consider is the noise level of the images. Here you can see that the luminance image has much more depth than the color image. STF is a very effective delinearization tool. If we enable track view, any changes made on the STF interface will be visible in the active image. We can adjust the stretch settings by pressing Control and clicking on the Auto Stretch button. The first thing we're going to do is change the sky background level. 0.25 is a good value for displaying and analyzing the image, but it's very high for a stretch. We usually use a sky background level of between 0.1 and 0.15. Now the lightness of the sky background is acceptable. If we go back to the luminance image now and apply the auto stretch, it will be applied with the same auto stretch settings as we applied to the color image. In other words, the stretch for each image is different, but they both have the same background lightness because they share some of the same auto stretch settings. That's the first step. The second step is to decide how aggressive a stretch we want. 
We can control this using the shadows clipping parameter. The further we move it to the right, the more aggressive the stretch. What we want is to be able to see the weakest areas in the deepest parts of the image, but without exaggerating the noise. This stretch, for example, is too aggressive. This one could be okay because we can see the weaker arms, but the noise is under control. Now we're going to stretch the luminance image using the same auto stretch settings. Now both images have the same sky background level and the same aggressiveness in the stretch. Although the aggressiveness is the same, the luminance image is more stretched because the data allow it. At this level of depth, the noise level is similar in both images. This is important because, returning to the glass analogy, if the luminance image is too bright compared with the color image, the composition will be much brighter. We'll lose color saturation and will exaggerate the noise in the lightness component. If the luminance image is too dark, the opposite will happen. The composite image will be darker, the color saturation will be higher, and the chrominance noise will therefore increase. So, what we're trying to do with the STF is make the two images more compatible in terms of lightness and background noise. To apply this delinearization to the two images, we can copy the STF settings over to the histogram transformation window. First, we need to make sure that track view is enabled. Second, we activate the image we want to delinearize. And third, we copy the settings over to the histogram window. Lastly, we apply the stretch permanently to the color image. The result is a white image. This is normal because the image has been stretched twice, once by histogram transformation and once by STF. If we disable the STF stretch, we can see the image correctly. Now we do the same with the luminance image. First, we ensure that track view is enabled so that the STF updates the parameters. Then we transfer the settings over to histogram transformation and from there to the luminance image. Finally, we disable the STF again. Now both images have been delinearized. In the previous video, we stressed an important point. After the color calibration, the RGB channels must be linked. This delinearization is done in the same way with the channels linked and pressing the auto stretch button. The final step is to do the LRGB composition by inserting the luminance image into the color image. Before we do the composition, to stop the glass from overflowing, we need to make sure that the luminance image is compatible with the lightness component of the color image. To help with this, we can view the lightness channel using the channel selector. Although we have the same noise level and sky background lightness in both images, the galaxy is quite a lot lighter in the luminance image because it has more depth. This may cause us problems in the lighter areas. We can use the channel selector in this way to guide us through processing the luminance image. In this case, as the central areas of the galaxy are much lighter, we can use PixInsight's Dynamic Range Compression Tool, HDRMT, to lower the brightness. We're going to activate the Lightness Mask option so that the process only affects the lightest areas. And we always start with the same setting, the number of layers. We're going to apply the process with a different number of layers to each preview. First, four layers. Then five. Six. and 7. We want to strike a visual balance between all the structures of different sizes in the body of the galaxy. Here we have 7 layers, 6, 5, and 4. The most balanced result is probably with between 5 and 6 layers, so let's stick with 6 layers. We apply the process, and now the lightness in the center of the galaxy is much more similar in both images. Now we're ready to do the LRGB composition. First, we select one of the two perceptual color spaces, 
we activate the lightness component only and drag the luminance image tab to the corresponding field. And now we do the composition by applying channel combination to the color image. As you can see, the image gains a lot of depth. We can see a lot more detail in the background, in the arms, in the background galaxies, and there are no problems in the nucleus of the galaxy. In the previous video, we saw that if we did the composition before compressing the dynamic range, we got artifacts in the nucleus because the lighter structures couldn't handle such a high color saturation. We've avoided that here by doing the dynamic range compression before the LRGB composition. Finally, we can apply some curves to enhance the color. Let's sample the pixel values and increase this saturation level. This is the RGB image, this is the LRGB composition, and this is the LRGB composition with a color saturation adjustment.